Chairman Powell, thank you very much for taking time to be with us here today. Recognize, first of all, that you get, um, I think, politely said, feedback from every sector on how you're doing your job. Uh, you are charged with two mandates. Primarily among those are price stability and combating unemployment. As my colleagues have discussed today, the labor market is clearly very tight, and you should be credited with succeeding in maximum employment and being a partner in this. Unfortunately, as we've also heard, and as the country is experiencing, we haven't collectively been as lucky in terms of price stability. Core CPI is still over 4%, and services and housing costs remain very sticky. Given the economic uncertainty on how the Fed will bring inflation to its 2% mandate, can you quickly touch on how the bank capital requirements Vice Chair Barr is proposing? And I'll be specific here. Uh, my Main Street businesses, especially farmers, uh, family farms, and uh, Iowans back in my district really provide a backbone on this, and they depend heavily in this area. Do you think that they will be facing a more difficult and expensive credit environment as a result of this? I, I don't think so, and particularly in the near term. So. Uh, First of all, many of those people will be dealing with regional and community banks That's right. rather than with the GSIBs. But uh, even with the GSIBs, though, the, as I mentioned, the, you know, the phase in for higher capital, the process of, of, uh, of publishing and then getting comments and evaluating those comments and, and then coming to a broad agreement and consensus on, on what to implement and over what time period, that takes time. And it, so it, won't, it will not be important during, during this period of the next year or two when where we're getting inflation back down to target and the economy's kind of normalizing, I don't think the capital will, will uh, you know, will, the capital changes will have much of an effect in the near term. So, Mr. Chairman, let me ensure that I'm hearing you correctly. And Vice Chair Barr is engaging with small businesses throughout the Midwest right now on potential knock-on effects from this holistic review. Some economic studies have found that these knock-on effects will increase borrowing between 50 and $200 billion. As we look to cut this in half, um, is this the right thing to be doing? Sorry, cut in half. The, the inflation rate. Honestly, I don't think the two are really in conflict. We, we have an obligation to bring inflation back down to 2% over time, and we will do that, and we'll use our tools to do that. Uh, but I think the question of bank capital is, is real. I don't see it as a, as a, as a key factor in, in how we think about inflation, because again, it'll take It'll take quite a while to decide what to do and then to implement. Uh, some of the changes we're talking about will have multiple year phase-in periods. For so, example. Mr. Chair, let me ask you on that implementation timeline, uh, particularly for new capital standards. You said it would be some years before it would go into effect. According to a report published last year by the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland, in the case of implementation Basel III, banks began to increase their capital ratios, and I quote, prior to the publication of specific language applicable to U.S. banks, end quote, and that bank responses we estimate to take place well before Basel III rules started to come into force after 2014. Do you agree with the Cleveland Fed, and do you believe that our banks will begin to adjust as soon as the proposal is released? Yes, I do. I, I, it's, it's not an absolute thing where they'll wait until the effective date. Right. They will certainly, and they may even be starting, but, but I would think the project, the earlier you start, the more gradual the path will be. Very quickly, I want to turn to a different subject. It's been brought up by a number of my banks back home uh, relating to a central bank digital currency or any federal-issued coin. We have seen how this administration and the last Congress wanted to require anyone who made more than $600 on a third-party settlement organization like an eBay purchase has to report that to the IRS. The existing threshold before the law was modified was $20,000. That is how far this administration wants to peek behind the curtain of what my constituents are spending their money on. And $600 in Iowa doesn't go a long way. It's the equivalent of a PlayStation or paying for your kids' dance classes. I'm a dad of six. <laughs> I digress on this, but I do want to know specifically, for my constituents back home, the thoughts of creating a central bank digital currency that tracks individuals. Uh, if the Fed were to offer a direct individual account to citizens, wouldn't this be a direct threat to the financial privacy of many Americans? Potentially, and that's why we would not, it's not something we support. We, we would not support, you know, accounts at the Federal Reserve by individuals. That would not be. If we were to, and we're a long way from this, if we were to you know, support at some point in the future a CBDC it would be one that were in, intermediated through the banking system and not directly at the Fed for exactly the reason you, you point out. I'm very 
happy to hear that. I think that's a good partnership with the individuals there and a respect for um, Americans across the board. 